Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be having a match between. Wait, what? Hold on a sec. Okay, there we go. Sorry, my some my player list got weird. Anyway, match between Ikins and the Sponge on Deadlands. So let us begin. So, oh, Ikins is starting on the bottom left corner of the map. He is playing Shieldbot, while Sponge also playing Shieldbots. And both players very quickly... Actually, Sponge getting very early Metal Extractor compared to Ikins, who's actually not focusing on... Oh, getting Commander Junior. Interesting choice. The Sponge, on the other hand, does have his Commander, an actual Morphable Commander. Which is the actual Commander Junior is a perfectly valid choice. But it is not Morphable, so you do need to build a power infrastructure in order to make that have energy. Whereas with the... Morphable Commander, usually people will have the E-Cell as their level 1 morph, and thus will be able to do just fine. So the Sponge very quickly sending out some shield, some bandits over, as is Icons. So Icons are a bit closer together, so the Sponge, he is not going to have quite the advantage right at the very start once this battle is joined. If Icons, however, is coming in this exact angle, it, no, this will work. Okay, I was about to say, the bandits would block each other off, but Icons is being a bit careful. Let's see if... Ikins is actually going right around that bandit, so the Sponge and Ikins have just avoided each other's starting forces. The Sponge choosing to go over the hills while Ikins instead of going down around the side here. So Ikins will be meeting up with one of the bandits and should be able to get rid of it actually. One bandit on two and let's see, no it's only one on one and there goes the second bandit but Ikins not able to finish off the Sponge's bandit and the Sponge retreating, pincering in these bandits and that should no, that's not going to do it. The Sponge is continuing to move forward. He is not going for that. And Ikins trying to harass with this, but the Sponge focusing entirely on his main base, getting some power infrastructure to build up from there, and using that to push these Metal Extractors just a bit harder than they would be otherwise. Just to overdrive them. And Ikins, on the other hand, he is not... He looks like he is trying to focus... or Actually, he's not focusing on expanding either. Both players are setting the military. They are not focusing on expansion at all. So this is going to be apparently a very economy light game. Very military focused, very light on expansion. Though I imagine once we get to about five minutes in that we will start to see expansion as the players get a bit more confident in their ability to defend their territory. But Deadlines is a map that if you can get the center right here, these are three metal extractors here. Not the strongest metal extractors, only three metal per. Oh. But Ikins is going for a bit of harassment, not able to do any damage, unfortunately. Just a slight amount of damage. He got rid of... No, these are both Ikins bandits. Anyways, I was saying, this middle section here, there's only three metal worth, but it's pretty easy to defend because of the hill. And if you can hold that, and hold these expansion tiers, because that's 12 metal total, that's where you want to focus on. But of course, it's kind of hard to get to that, since that is the center of the map. And here comes a thug with a bunch of bandits for Ikins and... Because the Sponge's forces were kind of spread out, it's working out very nicely for Ikins. He is able to get rid of half of the bandits that were up there, but unfortunately, they are having to crowd under the shield, which means they can get in each other's way. They can't easily, they cannot shoot through each other, so they have to make sure that they're in a nice line before engaging. But unfortunately, that's rather difficult to do. However, the shield is working out nicely for them, and that thug shield doing a great job. The Sponge's bandits going under the thug shield, but that's not quite enough. Unfortunately, Ikins' bandits are not able to support that thug right now. And there it goes. Now with the support. Able to get rid of all these bandits coming in. That thug is doing a wonderful job with protection. Nice micromanagement by Ikins, making sure that his bandits were under that thug. However, not really building anything yet. He's focusing a bit more on expansion, but he hasn't actually focused too heavily on it. He's... Okay, now building more thugs. He actually does have a weaker economy, mind you. The Sponge, his overdrive has now started to pay off. He has three metal coming out of all of the... Or, a little over three metal coming out of all these extractors, which are a base of two. And he is starting to expand towards the center as well. If he gets the center, the very center, like I said, one base to start, but you can overdrive them. Pretty easy to overdrive all three at once, and it is a defensible area. So, once you get to that point, overdrive with windmills, with laser turrets... A bit risky, but if you can hold it off, you can hold off any enemies coming in, it's powerful. And it looks like bandits are all the sponges producing at this point. He is getting some outlaws as well. His thugs will be coming in later, but that won't be for another minute or so at this rate. 
yeah, it's eight seconds for Bandit, and the Outlaw is going to be another... Oops, I don't want to do it all. The Outlaw is going to be another 25 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be a little while yet. About a minute, minute and a half before he starts to get thugs out. He does have an Outlaw, which is handy. And he does have a Convict, which is a shield, but it's not a particularly strong shield compared to thugs. Shield strength of 900 compared to a shield strength of 1250. So not that much weaker, but still, thugs are also damage. And another thug coming in to help out, adding his shield, and also providing just that much more cover for the bandits. So once again, Iken's moving in, and with an advantageous position, unfortunately, bandits going out of the shields, that is no good. But still, as best he can, keeping them under the shields, and the thugs have not been able to quite do much damage. They've been missing for the most part. But the Outlaw moving in, and the Outlaw does not care about shields. That shield tactic is starting to slow down, a, or gonna get slowed down a bit, with the Outlaw coming in, slowing everything down. However, as you can see, Iken's... Although he doesn't have the metal for it quite yet, he does have twice the build power moving into the factory. Once he gets the metal for it, that will be extremely handy. While the sponge actually does have the build power for it, but he's focusing entirely differently. He's focusing on a gunship switch. Which is interesting. The shield bot anti-air, dedicated anti-air, the Vandal, is the toughest anti-air, but apparently the weakest for cost. So you take it would take about a dozen Vandals to be able to start being quite effective. However, they do have, like all anti-air, fairly decent range. And like I said, they are, I believe, the toughest for costs, is what I understand. So, it will be difficult to push in, but on the other hand, Ikens does have a disadvantage militarily. He's actually switching over a bit to economy. He's He does have some more troops coming in, and he does have a Roach coming in. That Roach will be able to take out a lot here. And the band is doing a nice job harassing, however, they are not going to be able to get past the laser turret here. One of them going down. And, like I said, the Sponge has a lot of military. He has taken the center. He is holding it pretty well. And because he has the center, he can easily hold at least this side of the map. Iken's having a bit of a harder time holding his side, and he's not getting as much of a military going either. He does have a pretty decent military, but it's just... It's really going to come down to how he micromanages under the shields. Because he's been doing a really good job micromanaging under the shields, and that's been extremely useful for getting rid of these... Bandits, and now the Outlaw coming in. This Roach will not be able to get close enough to deal much damage at all. It tried its best, but the thing is, the Outlaws, they are active. They are constantly pulsing out, which means any Roaches coming in will immediately be stopped and just detonated before they become dangerous. Thug coming in very nicely in the east side to deal with this laser turret. And Ikins getting in his Bandits, once again going under the shields. However, the shield was mostly destroyed. This Bandit looks like it's just going to go instead for harassment, and it's probably the better option take what it can before it dies, and that thug continuing the job, getting rid of one of the metal extractors, not a bad choice. However, this metal extractor to the north is much less well defended, while Ikens is also expanding to the north, so he should discover that in due time. Center, however, is the big prize, and like I said, the sponge has already taken it. It's not a lot of base metal, and he hasn't put any power to it to actually make it that worthwhile. The important part is the defensive position, the fact that it's hard to climb up, and it's hard to deal with from the ground. However, the Sponge is moving out of that position, allowing Icons to get a few shots in, but nothing too major quite yet. No, the Sponge is moving completely out of that position. He is going straight for that Outlaw. And getting out of the defensible position, this is not the best idea, I don't think. It looks like it is not working out. No, as we can see, a lot of the forces are being destroyed. Now, these Outlaws are doing a really good job. That's, that's really where a lot of it is going in the Sponge's favor right now, is that these Outlaws are protected by the thug and they are able to deal a lot of damage to everything around despite the shields so the sponge he does have a military advantage however a roach able to get rid of three bandits not a bad trade but not the best trade and a couple of dirtbags just adding his tanks right now it looks like i can might be getting a little bit desperate trying to get i suppose he's using dirtbags at this point like they are a really good tank but that's using up factory time that could be for units that are actually going to deal damage. Now, against vehicles, I can totally understand dirt bags, but against bots, even though they do block bots, bots are just that much more maneuverable. They can turn on a dime where vehicles can't. So, terrain blocking like that is kind of useful, but not especially. Because the bots can easily just go around it, and it just blocks the fire. I mean, immediately it blocks fire both ways, but still. And a landmine set up by Sponge. This is a roach right here. 
if Ikens moves forward and when Ikens moves forward, because it looks like he might be getting rather confident after what happened in the last battle. I mean, the Sponge did lose a few bandits. He did take out a few of Ikens' forces, but it's still fairly even at this point. However, Ikens does have a has had an economic advantage this entire game. Right now, five metal up, but that is still a pretty big economic advantage. And Ikens, on the other hand, he is getting more production going and. That Roach moved forward, but did not deal a whole lot of damage. Nothing, no wrecks. Some damage has been dealt to these rogues, and actually one of them almost dead. But that was our landmine. That Roach did not get there. So actually, there is no reason Ikins can't just go into an attack other than the Outlaws. That's his biggest threat right now, is these Outlaws protected by the Thugs. And it looks like he's just trying to... He might be going around. These rogues and Thugs. I want to keep an eye on those, because those look like they're going around. And they are, in fact... Going to the north, they are not attacking directly the center. While he's also sending some defensive forces over to the south in case the Sponge tries to expand them. The Sponge actually has not been expanding that much. He's been focusing very much on building up his economy, getting up a bunch of Banshees. He has about a dozen Banshees now. This is what he's really been focusing on, just keeping enough of Iken's forces busy to get these Banshees going. And Iken's, I don't believe, suspects this at all. There's no sign that he does. He has no Vandals. His bandits will have a chance, the rogues will not, the thugs will try, but they won't be able to hit. So it's about a dozen banshees, looks like, I'm guessing probably 15 to 20 banshees, and then the sponge will just go for it. Iken's commander coming in, doing a pretty good job getting rid of the bandits that are there, and... In fact, I'm not even sure if the sponge has a particular number, he might just be waiting until the center breaks, and then once Iken's breaks through the center, he'll just go in with... I guess that's exactly what he's going for. Actually, not really breaking through the center, but he is going around to the north. And these Banshees are coming in. Double check, the Sponge does have radar coverage on here. Ikins does also have radar coverage, but only to the center of the map. And the Banshees are in and dealing quite a lot of damage. Getting rid of Ikins' commander. And the commander destruction, not actually getting rid of a lot of other units. So, not the biggest deal. However, the Banshees are the biggest deal. The Thug's doing their best, but not able to actually deal a whole lot of damage. And these Banshees basically have the game in the sponge's bag. Now, at this point, I expect Vandals to be coming up. There we go. Vandals are being spammed out. Ikins, 16 metal going into each Vandal. He has two up right now, but those Banshees, there's a lot of damage they can deal with that. The Rogues taking a lot of the fire, though. The Vandals are able to stay alive, and actually, these Banshees, there are only eight of them so far, and about to be seven. Well, that, I don't think it'll matter, though. This Shieldbot Factory is just about to, it's halfway dead. The Vandals are doing what they can. The Convicts are doing a great job trying to repair it. But even with that, it's not going to... Actually, no, the Convicts are going trying to repair this Vandal. Not trying to repair the shield bot. The shield bot almost down. Three bandits. Three Banshees left. Two Banshees. The shield bot three is dead. And the Banshees have gone down as well. But that is the big prize. And at the same time, the center of the map, the Sponge moving in. And he is dealing a lot of damage here. These Outlaws are taking out everything that was in the center getting rid of what Ikins had taken in the center, and Ikins still is the northwest. He is taking this, the east side. He did move his defensive forces from down here over the east and trying to attack the base directly, but he has no way of easily dealing with the Banshees right now. And the center has been taken by the Sponge. He's broken through that contain. Well, that wasn't even contain, but there was a defensive line, and Ikins has lost it. Switching over to Cloakybot Factory, it'll be about a, 45 seconds, I'd say. minute, to, 45 seconds to a minute before that's up, and in that time, I don't see this going too well. Now, Ikins is leaving his forces right in the way of the Banshee, not going up to attack the main base, just getting hit by the Banshees, and I'm not sure if he's paying, I don't think he's paying attention to that. He is paying attention to his base instead. Ikins is playing very close attention to his base, trying to deal with that, and not at all focused on dealing with this Eastern, well, Eastern Massacre, really. It's gone now. All of his units have been destroyed. And Ikins, 13 metal to 16 metal from the Sponge. The Sponge... Well, he lost a couple extractors. Well, he lost one extractor over here. But most of his metal income is still fine. He has all the reclaim available for him. He can easily just reclaim all of this. That's his territory now. And he is pushing more Banshees hard. Just continuously getting more and more Banshees to try to deal with this. And Ikens at the same time has been unable to build anything. Just now getting Cloakie Factory. Has his warrior built up, or his glaive built up. Has a warrior coming up as well. Razor's Kiss for the Anti-Air, not bad against the Banshees, but there still is a sizable ground force coming in. Thugs, Outlaws, Bandits. Coming in with Banshee support, looks like Ikens is going to have to deal with 
what would probably be one final attack from the sponge and Ikens does have this harassment force. He might be going over to the east, and he is actually going to be found out. Ikens is getting up for Razor's Kiss as well, because he's about to be found out. The Sponge knows about this. He is sending his Banshees over, and that's all that's happening right now. There's nothing happening over to the south, but oh, the northeast, or northwest, rather. Ikens is not the, ra the Razor's Kiss will not be up in time, and he has no dedicated anti-air defenses. These Banshees are doing a wonderful job dealing with this. I'm not sure if Ikens is going to go out and try to break out of this contain right now with the Warriors because he is losing this Northwest expansion. He cannot deal with this. The Thugs are doing what they can, but they can't easily hit the Banshees. The Banshees are just dodging all that fire. So that is not going to help out very well. Those Thugs are down. The Northwest expansion is down. And at this point, it looks like a Roach has been spotted on radar from the looks of it. I can, actually, no, it's been spotted on line of sight. Icons has no radar right now, but he does have line of sight of that roach. He knows it's there. He's trying to get rid of it with the rogues and the rockos. And there it goes, completely harmless. Warrior taking it out in time, but now Icons has revealed himself to be using cloakies. And cloakies are going to have an easier time dealing with the banshees. The warriors have a much faster traveling projectile. They'll have an easier time hitting the banshees as they're moving around. Not quite as effective as, say, Jethro's or Vandals, but the Vandals are still in range, and the warriors are... I think the Warriors can hit air. Yep, they can. And as you can see, they're doing a pretty good job of it, too. Fast enough and rapid enough projectiles that they can just basically scour the entire sky. So it's going to be a bit easier for Ikins right now. Getting up a tick as well. Might be trying to get rid of these outlaws. I don't see how that's going to work because the outlaw pulse, that just gets in the way of any ticks trying to deal with it. But he is going for it. Or going near it, at least. No, he's going for it! This is not going to work out too well. However, it works out well enough. One of the outlaws actually being stunned. And there it goes. He is going for the attack with the Warriors and the Rockos. The Stunned Outlaw going down. Thugs as well will be going down very shortly. And... Well, actually, they're pulling back. Like I said, the terrain is kind of favorable for retreat at that point. He is... I should say, the Sponge does have the high ground at this point. And Ikens, unfortunately, losing some of his momentum. Losing both of his Warriors, too. And the Rock is doing what they can. The Outlaws have been destroyed, but more Outlaws will be forthcoming. Actually, not that soon. However, the Sponge has taken advantage of his greatly advantageous position, taking the entire center of the map. He has 30 metal compared to Icon's 7. Taking this northwest side as well. And I'd say that is game. A Roach coming in as well to deal with what it can. Getting rid of a few Rockos, but it needs to get... Well, at this point, the Sponge just needs to go for the kill. He has a huge advantage right now. The entire center economy is his. Icon's might try to go for one big push to try to get rid of this hoping that the sponge has overextended himself and I think that the sponge is producing the way he is now that he is not overextending he is pushing his actually he still is flooding metal a bit and he doesn't have enough energy to use all of that metal so there is a slight window that Ikens has but Ikens still has too little metal that is one thing Ikens still does not have a whole lot of metal income reclaiming to get what he can but he still only has enough metal income to power a single factory and at this point, it looks like this is it. The Sponge going for the kill. All the Warriors are dead. The Rockos are going down right afterwards. And that is not the kill. The Sponge not quite going for the kill at that point. Interesting. Granted, there are still Vandals to deal with. But the Warriors are the biggest... Oh, Jethro's as well have been built. But the Warriors are kind of the biggest plausible threat to both air and ground. Looks like... <laughs> and no, in case you're wondering... For people People in the chat commenting, this game looks familiar. Is this the rerun season? No, it's just Deadlands. Deadlands just does this. You just get maps like, you just get games like this where a bunch of stuff, once someone gets the center, it just goes. But I am a bit surprised that Ikins has been able to stay alive this long, that the sponge has not just pushed. Because I think the sponge could take it if he pushes right now. He has probably enough Banshees alone to take it from pushing. But he has not decided to go for that. Surprisingly enough, he is continuing to just go in and break up the forces that Ikens has built up, but not actually going further. Probably afraid of the Vandals. I mean, last time we sent the Banshees in, they did get wrecked. They got completely wrecked. Though they did destroy the shield by factoring the process, that was definitely worth it. And Jethro's are dealing what they can against the Banshees. The Warriors, like I said, however, are the more plausible threat right now, because those Jethro's will not last too long, especially since they decloak when attacking. And none of the Banshees have gone down. Now, the Razor's Kiss is definitely a plausible threat, which is why I'm a bit surprised the shield bots aren't coming in with the Banshees, that Ikins isn't being hit with a two-pronged attack right now by the Sponge. The Sponge 
is starting to move in. He is getting himself in a position to deal with this. Getting more and more of his units in. He is, he is going for the kill now. He's got to be going for the kill now. But still being cautious. Wants to make sure he doesn't get into the way of the Warriors. Because that Warrior will get rid of his band. It's no problem. And the Banshees are still up here. But the Bandits... The Bandits do not want to get too close to that Warrior. And for good reason. More Razors. Kiss is coming up. And... Is there anything else? I'm a bit curious if the sponge is going to go for something completely different. Either a Black Dawn or maybe a Crow or a Tack Nuke Silo. Probably not a Silencer. That's not likely to happen. Maybe a Tack Nuke Silo. Nope, just going straight for the Banshees. Not even worried about the Razor's Kiss. And it looks like 12 Banshees still alive. And this Pokemon Factory gone down. That's another Factory completely gone. A Tick able to hit the Banshees in the air. Close enough to the ground to actually deal the damage needed to be done. Unfortunately, getting rid of these Vandals as well. And at this point, all those Banshees gone down. Four Banshees remain from the 15 that attacked, but that Cloakabout Factory down once again. Icons once again, has no production. The Sponge, this is his window. He does not have to deal with anything but anti-air defenses. And a couple laser towers, but that's not a big deal right now for him. He has so many thugs and outlaws, it really doesn't matter. And Icons reclaiming what he can. At this point, he's flooding metal. He needs to start building up another factory. Unit under attack. And the Sponge continues just to push forward with the conventional forces he has, just trying to win by numbers rather than by one single super powerful unit, either a Strider or a Tack Nuke or a Silencer or something really big like that that would just completely eliminate Ikins with no regard for his defenses. And he's going in, and he's doing a fine job, actually. This is going to work out for the looks of it. The Thugs and Outlaws are finishing everything off. We're trying to do what it can. We're trying to get under the shields, but the thing is with shields, with a lot of shield, shield bots, they overlap each other in such a way that you can't easily get under them without destroying them. And the Banshees coming in one more time. And the Racer's Kiss is now open. However, it is dealing a lot of damage. There's only five Banshees. Four Banshees left now. And another three coming in to reinforce as the second Racer's Kiss has gone down. And this is game. Ikins trying to build up a Stinger to deal with everything. But that will not do it. And the Sponge has won the game. That is game. Ikins throws in the towel. So hope you enjoyed that, and I will have another match for you shortly, which is going to be a match on Quicksilver between Sactoth and Banana Eye. And given what happened with Banana Eye last time we saw with Google Frog, I am very curious to see how it's going to pan out this time. So stay tuned. <laughs>